Hot Wheels are a brand under the American Mattel toy company and were originally produced in 1968. Hot Wheels were conceived to be more like hot rod cars as compared to matchbox cars which are generally smaller scale models of production cars. There were 16 castings released on May the 18th 1968, originally known as the original Sweet 16. The first one produced was a dark blue custom Camaro. 11 more were designed by Harry Bradley, who was from the car industry and had designed the body of the Dodge Diora concept car and custom fleet side. Each had tyres with red pinstripes known as redline wheels. In addition to the cars themselves, Mattel produced racing track. Though it would be updated throughout the years, the original track consisted of a series of brightly coloured orange road sections with one or two superchargers which would use spinning wheels to propel the cars along the track. An important feature was Hot Wheels use of wide hard plastic tyres that created much less friction and tracked more smoothly than the narrow metal or plastic wheels used on contemporary matchboxes. Hot Wheels cars were designed to roll easily and at high speeds, which was a great innovation at the time. Hot Wheels were a big success. The series completely disrupted the whole industry for small die-cast car models from 1968 onwards, forcing the competition at Matchbox and elsewhere to completely rethink their concepts and to scramble to try and recover lost ground. Harry Bradley didn't think the cars would be a success and had quit Mattel to go back to the car industry. When the company asked him back, he recommended a good friend, Ira Guilford. Guilford, who had just left Chrysler, quickly accepted the job of designing the next Hot Wheels models. Some of Hot Wheels' greatest cars such as the Twin Mill and Spitting Image came from Ira Guilford's drawing board. The success was consolidated with the 1969 releases, with which Hot Wheels effectively established itself as the hottest brand of small toy car models in the USA. The initial prototypes of the Beach Bomb were faithful to the shape of the real VW Type 2 bus and had two surfboards sticking out the back windows, in a nod to the VW's perceived association with the surfing community and the slang term for a person who spends much time surfing, a Beach Bomb. During the fledgling Hot Wheels era, Mattel wanted to make sure that each of the cars could be used with any of the playsets and stonk track sets. 1970 bought a new Hot Wheels advertising slogan, Go With The Winner, and 43 new cars appeared. This was also the year that the Sizzlers and Heavyweights lines appeared. Ira Guilford was joined by Larry Wood in designing new cars. His first design would be the Tri Baby. In 2014 he was still working there designing cars. Mattel introduced the Snake and the Mongoose, a manufactured rivalry between two professional drag racers calling themselves the Snake and the Mongoose for the purposes of publicity. 1970 also introduced the first Silver series, which contained three silver painted models, the Boss Hoss, the Heavy Chevy and the King Cuda, which were only obtainable through a mail-in offer that included a membership to the Hot Wheels Club. These three cars featured supercharged engines featuring large roots blowers without hoods and open exhaust headers after the style of drag racing cars of the era. Popular among children, these silver cars were considered faster than the rest of the Hot Wheels lineup because they were supposedly heavier than other gravity models, but the accuracy of this claim has never been tested under scientific conditions. On the success of Hot Wheels, Mattel introduced the Sizzlers range in 1970, which included a small motor and tiny rechargeable NICAD battery that gave up to 5 minutes of use. They could run on regular orange track and the line was an immediate hit. Two lane track sets such as the California 8 race set were developed that allowed Sizzlers to race side by side, until Mattel created the black fat track which is three lanes wide with steep bank curves designed to allow Sizzlers to run free. However 1972 and 1973 were slow years, only seven new models were made in 1972. Of the 24 models appearing for 1973, only three were new models. Also the cars changed from Mattel's in-house Spectra Flame colours to mostly drab, solid enamel colours which mainstream Hot Wheels cars still use today. Due to low sales and the fact that the majority of the castings were not reused in later years, the 1972 and 1973 models are known to be very collectible. In 1974 Hot Wheels introduced its Flying Colours line and added flashy decals and tampo printed paint designs which helped revitalise sales. 
As with the lower friction wheels in 1968, this innovation was revolutionary in the industry, and although far less effective in terms of sales impact than in 1968, was copied by the competition, who didn't want to be outmaneuvered again by Mattel product strategists. In 1977, the red line wheel was phased out, with the red lines no longer being printed on the wheels. This cut costs, but also reflected that the red line tyres popular on high speed rated automotive tyres during the era of muscle cars and polyglass tyres were no longer popular. During this period, there was a trend away from wild hot rods and fantastic cars, and a move towards more realistic cars and trucks like competitor Matchbox. Sizzlers 2 was launched in 1976, and night riding Sizzlers the following year, that allowed headlights to be turned on or off. Sizzlers were then phased out completely, being replaced by the pullback Scorchers series. In the 1990s, Mattel's trademark on the Sizzlers name had lapsed, and toy company Playing Mantis released a new Sizzlers line of NASCAR stock car models to capitalise on the booming popularity of the sport. In 2011, Sizzlers were re-released as Cars 2 characters. In 1981, Hot Ones wheels were introduced, which had gold-painted hubs and claimed to have thinner axles for greater speeds, along with additional suspension compliance that older production Hot Wheels lacked. Ultra Hot Wheels were introduced in 1984 and claimed further speed improvements. Hot Wheels started offering models based on 1980s era sports and economy cars like the Pontiac Fiero or Dodge Omni 024, in addition to their typical hot rod and muscle car style offerings. In 1983, a new style of wheel called Real Riders was introduced, which featured real rubber tyres. Despite the fact that they were very popular, Real Riders was short-lived because of the high production costs. In the late 1980s, the so-called Blue Card Blister Pack colour scheme was introduced, which would become the basis of Hot Wheels colours still used today. Two other innovations were introduced briefly in Hot Wheels cars in the 1980s. The first, Thermal Colour Change Paint, changed the car's colour on exposure to hot or cold temperatures. The second, Crack Ups, were vehicles with a panel that on contact would rotate to reveal a reverse side which appeared to be heavily dented. In the 1980s, Hot Wheels had got into a controversy with General Motors' Chevrolet Motor Division. GM delayed the production of their new C4 Corvette, but Mattel got wind of the new car and produced the toy version before the real version was on the road. GM was angered and nearly pulled its licensing with Mattel, but cooler heads prevailed. To test the waters of the new computer games market, Mattel released a computer game version of Hot Wheels for various 8-bit platforms starting in 1984. They've since introduced many different games on home computers, then consoles and smartphones, with Hot Wheels Race Off for Android and iOS in 2017 being the latest. In 1995, the lineup was split into series. First, the model series that included all of the year's new castings, and was renamed to first editions the following year. Next was the Treasure Hunt series, that consisted initially of 12 cars every year, with one or two released per month. The original production run was 10,000 of each car worldwide. That number has since risen due to the increasing demand and popularity of Hot Wheels as a collector's item. The rest of the series included four cars with paint schemes that followed a theme. For example, the Pearl Driver cars all had pearlescent paint. Sales for the series model soared, with another program also introduced that year called the Bonus Cars program, causing stores around the nation to have shortages. Purchasing the four car sets and sending in the packaging backs, plus a handling fee, gave you the opportunity to collect the bonus cars. One each release for each quarter of the year, starting in 1996 through at least 2000. Mattel brought Tyco toys in 1997. Along with the purchase came old competitor Matchbox. Arguably the two most dominant companies in Matchbox sized cars were now under one roof. In 1998, Mattel celebrated the 30th anniversary of the Hot Wheels brand by replicating various cars and individual packaging from its 30-year history, and packaging these replicated vehicles in special 30th anniversary boxes. And in 2003, Hot Wheels celebrated its 35th anniversary with a full-length computer-animated film called Hot Wheels Highway 35 World Race, 
This movie tied into the Highway 35 line of cars and featured 35 classic Hot Wheels cars with special graphics and co-molded wheels. Hot Wheels were traditionally only bought by children, but in the late 1990s, those 1960s and 70s kids had grown up and continued to collect the cars as adults. Mattel estimates that 41 million children grew up playing with the toys, and children between the age of 5 and 15 have an average of 41 cars. Most believe the collecting craze started with the Treasure Hunt series in 1995, and Mattel has produced cars that appeal to collectors such as the Hot Wheels Classics line. Hot Wheels conventions are regularly held around the United States. Mattel announced that there would be a major motion picture centered around the Hot Wheels brand, but the film went into development hell. With the success of the first Transformers movie in 2007 and the Fast and the Furious franchise, there was renewed interest in 2011, but in 2017 it was still in development. The movie is still being talked about, but whether it ever happens is unknown. In 2004, Hot Wheels unveiled its Hot 100 line, comprising 100 new models. These new models included cartoonish vehicles such as tuned, blings, hard nose, crews, and fatbacks. Fatbacks models include the Toyota Supra and a Corvette C6. These vehicles didn't sell as well as Mattel expected, and many could still be found in stores throughout 2005. Mattel also released 2004 first edition cars with unpainted Zamac bodies, sold through Toys R Us in limited numbers. In 2005, Hot Wheels continued the new Extreme castings for the second year, debuting 40 distorted cars in addition to 20 realistic models. Hot Wheels also unveiled its new Faster Than Ever line of cars, which had special nickel-plated axles, along with bronze-coloured open-hole five-spoke wheels. These adjustments supposedly reduced friction dramatically. In 2007, Hot Wheels released a series called Modifighters, which are similar to Transformers except for the fact that they were originally cars and were modified into robots. In 2018, for the Hot Wheels 50th anniversary, a Hot Wheels 50th anniversary logo was also placed beside the set's name on the packaging. Since then, Mattel has continued to sell its Hot Wheels line of cars, testing the waters with new ideas like a 3D CGI kids TV series. Mattel hasn't just produced matchbox sized cars under Hot Wheels. The Grand Tauros line of 1 in 43 scale models was released as early as 1970 but many more have been produced in more recent years. Elite Hot Wheels are 1 in 18, 1 in 43, and 1 in 50, and highly detailed, and the majority of them are based on Ferraris. In 2016, Hot Wheels started a new line of collector's models in a line called Car Culture. Car Culture is Hot Wheels' line of premium 1 in 64 models with metal bodies and bases, two-piece wheels with rubber tyres, and more detailed decorations. In some cases, Hot Wheels dies have been sold or acquired by other companies once Mattel had finished using them. One example were early dies that made their way to Argentina and were reproduced as Mukies, though not with spectroflame paints or the same quality as seen in Mattel's products. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month and hit that subscribe button to get notified of videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.